hear that opening song, it reminds me, I have to match the energy of that song. And people who know me in my life see me as a, a very highly energetic person, but not in personality. <laughs> like I can go all day long and I bounce around, but my personality isn't all that charismatic and dynamic. And to have an, an upbeat song like that before I come on, it's sort of a, a juxtaposition of realities. But in my heart, I'm excited about what I want to share with you every day. So Colossians chapter 1, verse 26 through 27, is going to apply to what we are facing today. It is June the 2nd, Tuesday, six months into the new year, 2020, which has been one of the most disruptive, disturbing, bewildering years in my lifetime. And it's only going to get more intense, more bewildering, and maybe even more divisive between now and November. Whatever COVID-19 COVID was, whatever is the real story behind the protests, um, whatever the real issues are coming up to the election in November, it is all going to be intensified and twisted and turned. And there are just always agendas at play. And things being done to set up a response later on. And, you know, we have yet to even get to the October surprise, which is always what one party or the other springs on the other just before the election. So get ready. And as Christians, we need to have something stronger than politics, something even stronger than our love for the United States of America and our way of life, something that roots us deeper. Paul refers to it as the mystery in chapter one of Colossians verse 26. Let's look at that. The mystery, which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That great word mystery. We look at it as a, a crime mystery, as a story that uh, details are given and they're laid out in an obfuscated kind of way until you get to the end of the book, you know how it played out. Well, that's not the mystery he's referring to in the theological sense or the doctrinal uh, religious sense. A, a mystery in this terminology is something that was unknown before or misunderstood before, but has now been clearly revealed. And that's how he refers to the church, the walk of grace of the believer who has eternal life and salvation and forgiveness of sins and pardon and been made part of the family of God and has been betrothed and redeemed and adopted into the family of God. And then the Gentiles grafted in to the people of God. All of that was a mystery to the Old Testament writers. God had revealed things that would happen, but they didn't fully understand exactly who the Messiah was going to be and what he would do or even when it would happen. Therefore, when the Messiah came, they didn't recognize him for who he was. Uh, their, the truth they had about him was shadowed in, in mist and clouds of unclarity. Well, Paul is saying the mystery which had been hidden all this time has now been revealed to his saints, the believers, the hagias ones, the ones who've been made holy, declared righteous by the work of Christ on the cross, the regenerating power of the Holy Spirit and the indwelling of the Spirit and the very declaration of God. To them, God willed to make known. God chose uh, 33 AD or 30 AD to be the time when the crucifixion would happen and all the world would realize that would hear the story that the gospel the story has been fulfilled the messiah has come and he's done his work it's been known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the gentiles see the old testament told about the day when gentiles would join in the family of god but it was hard for the jews to even understand that and accept it much less see how it could possibly happen because almost all Gentiles hated the Jews. And the Jews at this point in Roman history had no real power. They were subjugated. They were enslaved by the Roman Empire. But because of that, now the Gentiles are part of the family of God, which Paul describes here as, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Most everyone watching this today, all of us are Gentiles. Some of you might have Jewish blood in you, and 
we all have a deep appreciation for the Jewish faith, but we're Gentiles. If God had not made that transition, if God had not seen that, stated that, predetermined that long before the foundation of the world, told the prophets in Jewish history this was going to happen, and then the apostles took the gospel to the Gentiles, you and I would be entrenched in paganism or in modern secularism. But thank God we know the mystery. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. I hope you'll rejoice in that today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that this mystery has been made known to us and, and we can not only know it, we can experience it, we can sense it, and we can live it out every day. I pray for each one of us that we will demonstrate to our community, our co-workers, our friends, and our family, the grace and peace and serenity and stability we have in Jesus Christ. And that even if things around us crumble and fall apart, we can respond with a sense of grace that reflects you. May each one of us walk like that today, for we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow.